What is up guys, The Casey's here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to connect to Firebase Database within your iOS app. Getting started, we're going to head to Firebase. Well, console.firebase.google.com. You guys are going to have to log in to your Google account up here at the top. That is my account. And um, if you guys don't have a project already, uh, maybe create one for testing purposes just by clicking add project on following those few steps. But if you have an existing project like I do, like a social media, um, just for this uh, test purpose, you can use this database and go to, like once you open it, go to database and you will, um, maybe if you have data there, you'll see data. But uh, when you go to overview, you can click add another app. And today we're going to be doing an iOS, so we're going to add an app. And um, we need to open up our Xcode. File, new, project, shift command N. Single view application. We're going to go, product name is going to be Firebase Database Test. Oh, one word. Otherwise, you might have issues if you do multiple words. Learn that the hard way. Especially with uh, CocoaPods. If you do spaces and stuff like that, you are likely to have errors. Great guess re respiratory. And um, now you got uh, your bundle identifier right here. Just a command copy on that. And the proper format should be com.yourname or your business's name usually it's your name, dot Firebase, or dot your application's name. That's what it should be. Um, and paste that here. Nickname's optional, and App Store ID is optional as well. We're going to get this download config file, and as long as you don't have one in your downloads folder, when you click download, it'll throw it into the folder, and um, just pull that out. Mine is two because I already have one. So I'm going to delete that one. So if you have to, just go and uh, delete one. Or you can rename it, either one. Alright, and once you got that, just uh, drag and drop that into your project. Um, finish. And we've done that. So go back to firebase.com and continue. Now it's telling us um, we got to do some Cocoa Pod stuff. So if you guys don't have Cocoa Pods, the, I believe this is the reference to CocoaPods.com. Just click that. There's a little uh, tutorial on how to install Cocoa Pods. It's very simple. Cocoa Pods is an amazing source for third-party stuff that you can put into your application. Uh, for instance, maybe you need to um, add a feature that someone else has already created. They normally have it on Cocoa Pods, so you can just um, download it via Cocoa Pod, via a pod, I guess. Uh, but we're gonna copy. Well, we don't have to copy it, but uh, open up your terminal, okay? And we're gonna cd. Let me uh, make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna cd to our desktop. And if you click tab, it auto completes. And we're going to cd into what's it, a Firebase database test, and we're going to say pod init. Okay, and that's going to run a couple different things for us, and it's going to throw up this uh, folder or file in our uh, folder when it completes. So you can open up your Firebase database test folder or your projects folder and uh, await the completion of this because my computer's super slow. Okay, there we go. So once that's done in your folder, you will see a pod file. You're gonna wanna open that up, head back to Firebase, copy this pod Firebase core, command C to copy, go over to the pod file, space, space, paste, oh, whatever, save it and uh, save, make sure it's saved. And then for our demonstration, we're gonna also need uh, Firebase slash database. Okay, so save that. 
and uh, now we can say pod install. Now this is the dependencies I was talking about. Um, Firebase has created code for us so we can use their database, their authentication, um, all their cool different things. They have different pod files, of course, but you can get this into your application via CocoaPods. And that's what we're doing right here in this pod file. We're downloading basically their code to um, Firebase database, Firebase uh, itself, okay? And if you guys ever see this little thing right there, you might notice, you know, see pod file has smart quotes sanitized. You can see the little difference right there. You can delete it when you're in text editor and paste or do another one and click command Z and it will undo that little smart quote. It, it kind of tells you it's a bad idea um, to use smart quotes, okay? Um, but we'll go back to Firebase and we finish all those steps. Now it's telling us to go to our app delegate dot or app delegate class and we're going to copy this little Firebase app dot configure and we're going to head into oh we got to exit out of that application once you uh, install your pods otherwise you can have errors um, you want to use this white file from now on it's called the XC workspace um, and we're going to want to go to our app delegate dot swift and at the top, we're going to import Firebase. Um, let's import that, import Firebase. And then in did finish launching with options, we're gonna paste that little bit of code that we had and we're going to build this application. When you build it, it should uh, make sure that nothing is wrong and that it can compile properly. All right, everything seems to be working just fine. We can head back to Firebase and click Finish. So we're all done there. Um, now, we're gonna go to Docs up here at the top in Firebase. I don't know what the heck that just did. What the heck? Okay, then, uh, Database. We're gonna go to Database. What the heck is it keep downloading? What the heck? Dot. It's downloading an HTML file. Okay, so I'm just gonna click learn more. Sheesh, Firebase. All right, so I guess it might not be working. Um, we're gonna go to documentation. Okay, so you guys will be to this place and just click get started for iOS and develop we're going to real-time database and get started so you go here um, it's going to tell you things you need to do we already imported this pod file right here in our uh, well this pod in our pod file and um, it's telling you to use XC workspace configuring we did the fire app configure and once you've initialized it um, it's telling you to define uh, the database reference right here and uh, we're gonna do that okay command copy in our application we're just going to have a label that changes its text so you can see how to connect okay um, so right above view did load on our view controller we're just gonna paste a little bit of code that they tell us to use this is basically um, oh you have to import firebase as well this is um, connecting us to Firebase uh, with this stuff right there. And um, we can't use this right here. Well, we'll use that later, but we'll leave it right there. Now, on the documentation, if you say read and write, uh, click on read and write data, we'll see that again. But this time, it's going to talk more about uh, reading data right here. Uh, this is setting because it has dot set. Uh, dot set is setting a value. And uh, reading is like so you're observing an event or a value. Sorry. So post ref is a reference to a point in data, kind of like this self.ref.child. Uh, that's the reference. Um, hence ref 
Um, the child is kind of like a node, so in our um, social app, let's go to database, uh, a child would be dot uh, posts. Okay, that's a child of our database. So if we said dot child posts, it's going to go into posts. And if we say set value, it's going to post some or set a value inside of posts because that's the child it's under. Hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, they have lots of documentation here, which you should definitely read whether or not you understand it because there's lots to learn. And uh, unless you work for Firebase, you're probably not an expert on all this stuff because it's always changing too. Um, so we're going to be reading. So this little bit of code right here, read data once. There's an observe single event and then there's an observe event or value, sorry. Uh, observe single event, observe... Uh, we're observing a value. Um, I noticed in my own application that I'm building right now, if you say observe, it's going to be constantly looking for new data. So this is like, you're going to want to use this on data that's constantly changing, uploading, um, re reloading data. And observe single event will be like a one time you get some data. You're not listening for any updates in the data or anything like that. So a good instance for this would be on a feed VC, um, kind of like in our social media app. I don't know if I use this, but at that time I didn't know about this. Um, but if you use a single event, it's just going to read that data once. Uh, maybe the user has the ability to reload the data by swiping up on the table view, but you don't want to be observing the data and constantly reloading it on your feed VC because that will mess up the table view one and uh, two is just not good practice okay and um, you can read into more of the dot value stuff where do they have that they have it somewhere here in the documentation uh, structured data work with lists of data stuff like that I think it's in work with lists of data but uh, just for this we're going to copy this ref dot child users dot child ID observe okay I'm gonna copy that and we're going to head back to our uh, view controller. And we're going to paste that right here. Now, uh, this little bit ref equals, we're going to get that and throw that in view did load as well. Okay. And uh, so right now we'll be accessing our users. Oh, what's going on? Yes, we do not have a user ID, so we are going to delete that. Uh, observe single event dot value snapshot in value dot or uh, value equals snapshot dot value. Okay, let user equal. Okay, user init. This is uh, accessing a class. We're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be. Well, I guess we could just print the data. That'd be a lot more simple, wouldn't it? Print uh, username. Okay. Um, so I guess for this we should go. This is pulling. This is going to users, right? And um, mm, I think we'll we'll change this up a little bit. Users. Uh, which one was I? Yeah, this one. It's a fake user. Uh, I created this one. It's fake. So copy that. Uh, you. This is just for example purposes. Um, dot child and we're gonna paste this uh, user ID I'll probably delete this after this anyways um, but so you can see here in Firebase's example it's a variable there but for this example I'm just putting in hard-coded data so you guys can see how you can use this in your app using child nodes and going down further um, but I'm going into users right here and then I'm going to be going to this user and we're going to be accessing the username which is ADF yeah uh, ASD whatever and uh, we're going to be printing that person's user okay and uh, that's all we're going to be doing but this is going to be showing you guys um, all you can do with Firebase which is really cool observe single event Okay, I guess we can make this a little bit bigger, huh? Those over there. All right, so let's run this. 
Might take a little bit, but uh, I hope you guys get the basic concept of all of this stuff. And uh, hopefully it helped you. If it didn't, if you need some more help, first check their documentation because they literally have the answers to everything. In my own practice of using this stuff, I've gone uh, to the documentation, like, I can't find it. And then I tried Googling it and you can't find it. And you just have to go back to the documentation and really read it. And eventually you'll find it. It's just a matter of, are you looking in the right place? Um, they also, if you go on Stack Overflow, you can tag Firebase. There's usually a lot of people that help uh, with Firebase questions there. But definitely leave a comment. I should be able to help you out just getting data. It's pretty simple. But of course, if you haven't done it before, it can be confusing. Okay, so the problem I have is uh, I actually pulled in the wrong info.plist. So remove, move to trash. Uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, you might come across the same problem. But uh, if you ever need to re-download a uh, info.plist, you can go here, go to the right project or the right app and click download. And of course, I might have the same problem of two different ones in the downloads. Or maybe not. Oh, I don't. Okay. Uh, so now I can just drag this into the project and uh, finish. And now if I run this again, it should work. Um, hopefully, hopefully it works. Let's see, and rules, I shouldn't have done this, I was just, I had no clue what was going on. Usually the, the rules can be your problem for uh, read and write, but of course mine was, I wasn't even in the right, uh, what do you call it, project. So now let's run this again, and it should work. Um, if it doesn't, I have no clue. Okay, there we go. So it did work. Uh, Jake is printing up here at the bottom. And you guys now know how to read data with Firebase. If you guys have any questions, you want to go further, I have a social media app out uh, on YouTube. I have a messaging app out on YouTube. You guys can watch those videos. Updates are soon to come because this is iOS 11 season and uh, those videos are kind of outdated now. So we'll be making a cool app soon, and I uh, hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.